I welcome you all. I welcome you all to the new session of the Involves Laplace Transform. And in this session, we shall be studying about the use of the Laplace Inverse Transform on the functions. And the method we are going to study is to how to solve the questions using the use of partial fractions. So let us see how to use or how to apply the partial fractions to solve the questions of Laplace Inverse. So first of all, we have to know the basics or the basic rules of applying the partial fractions. So the basic rules are the use that is if we have the factors or the roots in the denominator as a linear root. So we have one upon x minus a into x minus of b. So this can be written as a upon x minus a plus b upon x minus of b. So what we shall do, we shall rationalize it or we shall take the LCM. So a gets multiplied with x minus b and the b multiplied by x minus a. And we shall then be comparing the coefficients of x and constants. And then the coefficients of the x and a shall be compared with the coefficients that are present in the left hand side of the equation. In this way, we shall be able to get the values of a and b. So when we get the value of a and b, we shall substitute here. So in this way, the linear roots are then expanded as a sum of the linear roots. Similarly, if we have that we have in the denominator, the linear roots and again, we have a repeated root also in the denominator. So such type of roots are uh, expanded in this manner. It is a upon x minus a plus b upon x minus b plus c upon x minus b ka whole square. So you have to remember that if there is repeated root in the denominator, then the order of the repetition is carried on, is taken into consideration. So if there is a square of the order, then it, has, it is expanded to two terms. So you can see how it is expanded. It's expanded as b upon x minus b plus c upon x minus b ka whole square. If supposingly the order was cube, that it is a upon a, uh, sorry, it is one upon x minus a upon x minus b ka whole cube. So the term would be b upon x minus b plus c upon x minus b ka whole square plus another term that would be d upon x minus of b ka whole cube. So you would have got three terms for the repeated root if the order of the repetition was three. So by using these rules, you have to take the LCM and then compare the coefficients for the various terms of x square, x cube, and x and the constants from the left hand side. And on the comparison, you could got have could go, uh, get the value of the a, b, c and d if the order of the repetition was three and then substituting these values you can break your terms in the partial fractions similarly if we have a linear root and a quadratic equation so the way to express it in the terms of the partial fraction is that it is a upon x minus a for the linear root and for the quadratic equation we express it as dx plus e upon x square plus bx plus c. So you can see here, this dx plus e is a type that it is a derivative of the denominator. So we have expressed is that dx plus e upon x square plus bx plus c. Again, you take the LCM. When you take the LCM, then, then the subsequent terms are multiplied with the numerators. You solve it, you collect the terms of x square, x and the constants and compare it with the left hand side and you get the values for a d and e so in this way you by using you uh, use of these rules you can solve the you can break your roots in the partial fractions also when one thing when you solve it for partial fractions you should also know how to make the whole squares of the given quadratic equation in the denominator because when you make it for the whole square, you go it for whole squares, it is very easy to solve the uh, Laplace inverse because then you can visualize it that you can apply the Laplace inverse of the trigonometry or the hyperbolic functions to get your results. 
So it is x square plus bx plus c. What you do that whatever is the coefficient of x, so coefficient of x in here is you know that it is b. So divide the coefficient by two. So take its square, add its square, and subtract the square so that it makes no difference to the equation. So again, I am repeating what you have to do. Take the coefficient of x that is b. Divide the coefficient by two. So the coefficient becomes b by 2. Take its whole square, add it, and subtract it. So then club the terms of x square plus bx plus b by 2 ka whole square such that this becomes your x plus b ka 2 ka whole square. And the resultant becomes c minus of b by 2 ka whole square, which can be expressed as root of c minus b ka by 2 ka whole square ka whole square. So in this way, you are able to express this quadratic equation in the terms of whole squares. So I think it is clear how to make the whole squares of the given quadratic equation. Just divide the coefficient of x by 2. Then the value you get, add the square and subtract it square and try to club the squares with the equation of the part such that it becomes a whole square that it is x plus b by 2 ka whole square plus root of c minus b by 2 ka whole square ka whole square and then you can see that whether it is a plus sign or a negative sign in the center of these two whole squares and you can apply it for the trigonometry functions or the hyperbolic functions for the laplace inverse or the laplace transform whatever you get it is Laplace inverse of 1 upon s minus 2 upon s square plus 1. So we apply the partial fraction. So we break our linear root and the quadratic root as a upon s minus 2 plus bs plus c upon s square plus 1. So we have that we have multiplied or we have taken the LCM. So a is getting multiplied with s square plus 1 and bs plus c is multiplied with s minus of 2. So now Collecting the coefficients of s square, s and constants, we get the coefficient of s square as a plus b, coefficient of s is minus of 2p plus c, and the coefficient of constant is a minus of 2c. So on comparing, we can see that on the left hand side, the coefficient is only of a constant term, a plus b equal to 0, minus of 2b plus c is equal to 0, a minus of 2c is equal to 1. So now we can solve these linear equations to get the values of a, b. We have the, we can see these calculations. So we have just used the method to solve the linear equations and we get the values of a to be equal to one by five, b coming out to be minus one by five and c is coming out to be minus of two by five. So we substitute the values of a, b and c in this result. So the equation becomes Laplace inverse of so 1 upon 5 times s minus 2 minus 1 by 5 s upon s square plus 1 minus 2 by 5 into 1 upon s square plus 1. So Laplace inverse of s minus 1 upon s minus 2 is e to power 2t. Laplace inverse of s upon s square plus 1 is cos t and Laplace inverse of 1 upon s square plus 1 is sine t. So in this way, we are able to get the result of our question which was difficult to solve. So by using the use of partial fractions, it is very simple to calculate the Laplace inverse of the functions where we have the product of two functions. So let us solve the same question using the convolution theorem. So the convolution theorem states that, that if we have the product of the two f, f functions, then you know that the formula is Laplace inverse of f1s into f2s is integral 0 to t f1x into f2 of t minus x dx. So you can see here that there are two s functions. One is 1 upon s minus 2 and the second function is 1 upon s squared plus 1. So we have that f1s is 1 upon s minus 2 and f2 of s is 1 upon s squared plus 1. So if we apply the inverse Laplace transforms on the f1s and f2s, we get the functions as f1, one of the function will be sine x and the other function will be e to power 2x. So since we have to consider that let the first function be f1x and second function is f2 of p minus of x. So it is in, on our discretion, 
which function we shall consider f one x and which function we shall consider f two of t minus of x. So I have considered my first function to be this one upon s square plus one such that my f two of x is sine x. And for the exponential function, I have considered it in terms of t minus of x. So I have replaced my x with t minus of x such that it becomes e to power two times t minus of x. So now I apply the convolution. I have not considered this f two of t minus x for the sine x function because then I will have to apply the formula of sine c minus of d to solve the sum. So it is on your discretion which function you want to consider it for the f two of t minus x. So when you apply the convolution, so Laplace inverse of one upon s minus two upon s squared plus one gives you the term that is zero to t sine x e to power of two times t minus of x dx. So you can break your exponential into two terms e to power two t. And e to the power minus two x. Since the integration is over the x variable, so e to the power two t is treated as constant and is taken out of the integral. So you get the result that is e to the power two t zero to t integral sine x e to the power minus two x dx. Now we have the important result, recurrence result of the integration. That is e to the power a x sine of b x t x is nothing but e to the power a x upon a square plus b square into a sine b x minus of b cos of b x. So I shall be applying this formula on this integration to get my answer. So I have that it is e to the power two t e to the power minus two x upon A square plus b square, so a is my two, so it is two square plus one square as b is one, so I get minus two times sine x minus one cos x, and the limits are from zero to t. So I apply the limits to get my answer as minus two sine t minus cos t plus zero. So I solve it to get the answer as minus two by five sine t minus one by five cos t plus e to the power two t by five. So applying the convolution theorem also. You can also calculate the Laplace inverse of the functions where two functions are getting multiplied with each other. So I will show you a comparison of solving this uh, equation by two different methods. The first method that you had seen was by calculation of the using the partial fractions, and the second you have solved using the convolution contrast between the two methods. So here is the method. So you can see this method. You have got the same two results. It is one by five e to the power two t minus one by five cos t minus two by five sine t. And using the convolution theorem, also you get the same result. So it's on the student's choice that which method suits you, which method you want to apply, and you can apply any of the following methods to solve the equation. So you can use the partial fraction method, or you can use the convolution theorem to solve the equations when the two functions, two f of s functions, are getting multiplied with each other. So let us discuss another problem where again two functions are getting multiplied with each other, and now we are going to solve this equation using the convolution theorem. So we have in the convolution theorem. That Laplace inverse of f one s into f two s is integral zero to t f one x into f two of t minus x t x. So I have my first function, which is one by s square, and the another function, which is one upon s square plus a square. So I choose my f one s to be one upon s square minus a square. So if I take the Laplace inverse of this function, I get my result that is f one x as one by eight times. Hyperbolic sine of a x and f two s is one by s square, so I get the function as f two x is equal to x. So it is now in my choice that on which I want to apply f two of t minus x. I want to apply it on the hyperbolic sine, apply it on the x function. So I choose it for the x function. So I choose my f two of t minus x to be t minus x. So now I am applying the convolution theorem. So applying the convolution theorem, it is integral zero to t f one x into f two of t minus of x. So I have applied this formula here. So it is zero to t times one by a hyperbolic sine of a x into t minus x into d x. So 
So one by a is constant. It is coming out of the integration. So now I have I get t times zero to t sine of a x d x minus zero to t hyperbolic sine a x into x d x. Always remember that the integration or the differentiation of the hyperbolic sine is cos and and for the cos it is sine. So there is no change in the sine of the hyperbolic functions. So we get that it is t times cos a x by a zero to t. That is integration of sine hyperbolic is cos hyperbolic, and since a x is there, so it is again diff differentiable. So it is divided by a term. And similarly, when you take the double integration on the sine term, it again becomes sine a x upon a square. And the limits are applied from zero to t. So you apply the limits, upper limit minus lower limit, and you get the result as one by a times minus a t plus hyperbolic sine a t by a square, or it is one by a cube hyperbolic sine a t minus of a t.